Okay, I'm starting a new project here. Um, I had recently I had one of my donut bushings from the tie rod uh, rip on me. So uh, I needed a new one. Uh, I had a bunch of the old rubber ones that are still brand new, but I have been uninstalled. Uh, so I used one of those temporarily to replace these ones. You can see the difference between the rubber bushings and the poly bushings. Obviously these rubber ones are made to compress more when when you uh, tighten down the tie bar uh, to the chassis. So they compress. Um, these ones, uh, the poly, do not compress nearly as much. Um, you can kind of tell just by just by pushing on it with your finger that um, the poly are much stiffer. Um, but it ripped. Um, seems to be a lot under a lot of uh, load that would that would cause it to shear um, when it's in the uh, in place. So what I'm going to do is I've decided to try a little experiment and make my own. So you can get new ones. Obviously, they come in a pack of four and they're uh, quite expensive. Um, I think it's like uh, 38 quid. Uh, 38 pounds British or so for a, a new pack of four um, which is a lot for I mean what is essentially a, a piece of poly polyurethane um, <laughs> shaped in the in in the shape of a donut I mean really that's all it is so uh, what I've done is uh, I bought some polymer here this is a uh, ADA HP, which is uh, supposedly the, the high performance polymer. Um, it comes in a base and an activator. In order to make the actual bushing, what I'm going to do is I've got uh, two sizes here of aluminum. This is just uh, some aluminum um, piping. That I got uh, in a length. I think this is a 150 millimeter long. So what I've done is I've got it so that this will fit inside of there. Um, so that'll that'll form the outside. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the inside and then pour the putty around here. And then once it dries it will be in the shape that I need it. So it'll be a donut shape basically. Flat on the bottom, flat on the top. Okay, and I just mark the... I mark each unit by just using a sharpie. And hold the sharpie down here. I have an old piece of uh, the bushing. And uh, just make a mark. Twist the new one. Or twist the metal. And it makes a nice, uh, fairly level mark all around. Now that I made my mark here on the piece of aluminum, I'll just uh, go ahead and cut it with my Dremel and uh, just try to hold it as steady as possible. Go around. If it's, uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, when you pour the urethane, obviously it's going to level itself out. So it just needs to be um, close, and that that'll give me a, a a way to gauge how much to fill, um, how much to pour when I'm I'm pouring the urethane. Okay, so I got uh, eight now molds so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a piece of wax paper and put that down on the bottom I'm going to secure these each one to the wax paper and I'm going to make sure that I get the, the center uh, hole directly in the middle and then uh, secure them to the wax paper using some uh, hot glue hopefully the hot glue sticks to the wax paper and um, then what I'm going to do as I 
pour the mold, before I pour the mold, I'm going to put some of this. This is a dry graphite uh, spray, so I'm going to spray this in each of the molds. Alright, so what I'm doing is just making a small dab. And then that will form the middle. Drop this down right on top of it. Try not to get any of the glue to squeeze out to the outsides. But if a little bit does, it shouldn't be a big deal. And then you just let that harden. It doesn't stick very well to parchment paper, uh, but it sticks enough so that it'll cause a seal and uh, then it should be pretty easy to take apart and uh, get the mold uh, get the poly to come out of the mold I'll just uh, I'll, I'll kind of ruin this one just to show you what it looks like here I'll, I'll pop this up and you can see I don't know if it'll focus but you can see it kind of it seals the bottom pop that piece of glue out and I can do it again pretty easily so that's what I'm doing there for the for the inside all right and then for the outside just to get it centered I'm using this scrap piece of bushing and kind of centering it up on there so I got that piece centered now just I test it on both sides just Line up the outside and the inside to make it nice and centered. I mean, I can get out my measurement tools and measure it, but this is the easiest way to do it quickly. All right, so once I got that on and centered, I just hold it, hold it down, and my glue gun around the outside. All right, now. Mixing the two components, uh, the company says not to do partial batches, so they want you to put all of the activator into the base and then mix it all up and use the whole thing all at once. But I only have eight units here that I can make at a time, and I'm not about to waste. Um, Basically, I'd be wasting half of the poly if I were to do that. So, what I'm going to do is um, they give you the right proportions to mix it one to one. So, I'm just going to use half, half of this and half of this. Um, and what uh, the company says is you'll get total of 400 milliliters um, out of of usable product after doing the whole, after um, mixing the two. So um, I've gone ahead and made some lines on a, on a plastic cup here. So I'll put pour the base in until it gets up to the big line and then I'll top up to the small mark with the activator and then that'll be the correct proportion. And so from there I'll mix that up. I'll, I'll close these two back up and I'll store the rest of it um, until I can make another batch. Um, in order to, I'm going to spray some dry air into here before I seal this up, and that way um, it won't dry out on me. So, and that's it. Let's go mix it up.
up to the next line. Now you got about 15 minutes of working time with this. You gotta stir it in real well. So stir it good. Okay, and now, now once you get it all stirred in nice, now you can start pouring. Gotta make a little spout. You want to do it nice and slowly so as to not create air bubbles See, it's kind of slowing down here, but it's still, still pourable. Now we just wait, and I can't remember what it says for the cure time, but it's several hours, probably. I think 17 hours min, but um, I'm going to leave it for several days and let it uh, let it harden completely. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is obviously, um, well, hopefully it would be obvious, but uh, you want your work surface to be level. So I made sure that it's level in in both planes, so that my molds will come out as flat as, and uh, level as possible. Actually, this table was a little bit. Um, off level, so I I grabbed a piece of wood down here and I I jammed it in to lift up the table just a little bit, and um, so now now I have a nice level work surface, and my molds will come out uh, nice and nice and level. So it turns out it is extremely important. I knew it was important, but it is extremely important that you get the mixture correctly. So I made two batches of eight of tie bar bushes, two batches of eight tie bar bushes. And here is the first mixture. It's soft and it's still sticky, even after a couple days of letting it dry. Um, this is no good. This is absolute garbage. Um, this one I used too much of the additive and not enough of the uh, base compound. 
and so I messed up the mixture and it doesn't it doesn't set right. Here's the product I'm trying to mimic an actual Superflex tie bar bush. So you can see it's it's hard, it keeps its shape. This one just kind of oozes still, it's not it's not getting firm and I can I can push down it and I can deform it easily and it doesn't bounce back to shape. Here's the second batch I made where I got the mixture right. So what I ended up doing on the second batch, because this these were extremely difficult to get out of the molds I made, so I put some wax paper down as the base and I also put wax paper around the inside of the mold. I put wax paper around the inner sleeve and then I put wax paper around the outer sleeve and you can see it's still on here but it'll come off fairly easily uh, just by picking it off. Um, so this tie bar bush is nice and firm, it doesn't deflect, um, it doesn't um, lose its shape and so that's the way you want it to come out, nice and hard, just like the original. If I put them side by side on top of each other, they are within a fraction of a millimeter identical in size. And they feel to be the same hardness. Oh, here's actually the product sheet. It didn't come with a product sheet for the actual one I got. I got the... Uh, high performance, uh, 80, 80A high performance, but I don't know if this will focus, but you can see here's the the 85A uh, high performance, and you can see here all the, the tear strength and the tensile, uh, tensile strength and all the, all the numbers listed there. I'll throw one of them on there and use it and see how it goes. Um, I'll start it off at the back side of the uh, the tie bar uh, where it doesn't take as much pressure as the front side and um, see how it goes there and then uh, see if it fails. If it fails then obviously it's not the right compound and uh, I'll let you know but uh, if it doesn't fail and it keeps its uh, shape and doesn't get marred at all then I'll move it to the front side of the tie bar bush and I'll test it out for a few hundred miles like that and uh, see how it goes and I'll, I'll let, let you all know. On the subject of uh, getting the mixture right, so what I would recommend is not do not um, do them all at once. So I only made eight of the molds, so therefore I couldn't do the whole thing at once. Um, I would have, if I did it over again, I would make make 16 of these molds and pour every one of them at the same time. That way I could pour the whole contents because they they send you the contents in the right proportions to uh, get the get the mixture right. So what I would do <coughs> next time is uh, make enough molds to pour it all at once pour the entire contents of the activator into the urethane can and then mix it up in the can and then pour it um, out from there all at once. Um, that way I could have a consistent mixture and uh, a consistent um, manufacturing process for all 16 of them rather than having to try to measure and mix um, different batches using partial uh, part of the can and part of the uh, activator to try to get the mix right. So that's just uh, the way you should do it. That's the way the instructions say do not mix the partial cans. Don't try to get the mixture right and it turns out they're right. Um, don't try to do that. Do the whole thing at once and there, that way you'll have a good uh, product at the end.